be seated. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. How's everyone doing this morning? Everybody doing well? Amen. Amen. If you could turn your Bibles over to Samuel 12 and 1. Samuel 12 and 1. And just hold well, 2 Samuel, excuse me, 2 Samuel 12 and 1. And just hold your Bibles right there. Now, this is a story of David. And the Bible says that David was out one day and he was in his, his palace. And, and he was just, you know, trying to figure out something to do. You know, David had all this money. He had all these wives. And he was the king of the, of the nation. And so David had all this time on his hands to to uh, just do whatever and the Bible says that while he was in his palace he looked over and he saw a woman um, in the distance and she was bathing and he said wow I, I, uh, I, I want that woman and so the Bible says that he brought her into his palace and even though she was married the Bible says that they had relations and so David had relations with her and sent her back to her house and then the woman came and she, and she told David, she said, David, I have a child. And so David, uh, uh, trying to figure out, because David was supposed to be a righteous man. He was supposed to be a man of God. He was a king over all of Israel. But David had gotten himself into a mess. But David said, okay, I got to figure this thing out. How am I going to get out of this issue? How am I going to get out of this problem? And so the Bible says that David conspired and he had um, the woman's husband was actually a soldier in David's army. And so David called for the woman's husband and said, look, I'm going to put you on leave. I I'm going to go ahead and send you home to be with your wife. And, and within David's mind, he was saying, well, if I send him home to be with his wife, when the baby comes, he'll think it's his. But the Bible says that the man was so faithful to David, he says, no, I'm not going to go home to my wife. I'm going to sleep by your door. And so David was frustrated. He said, I got to figure something out because he, he, he said he had gotten himself into a, a very difficult situation. And so the Bible says that David said, I know what I'll do. He said, I'll send Uriah out on, on, on back into the army and back into the war. And he says, I'm going to put him on the front line. And, and, and so he put him on the front line and he told his men around him. He says, when we get, when you get in the thick of the battle and he put him on the front line, he says, I want you to pull back from him and allow him to be killed. And so the Bible says the men did just like David did, said, and, and Uriah was dead. And so David, thinking that, okay, I'm the king, I had a little problem, I had a little issue, didn't want nobody to think bad about me, he said, I, I'm gonna get, take care of this thing. And so after Uriah was dead, the Bible says that David brought this woman into his house, and he made her one of his wives. Now let's go down to 2 Samuel 12 and 1. And it said, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing, save one little all am, lamb, which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb, and dressed it for the man that was to come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said unto Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And so David, he was a righteous man, right? He was the king. He didn't want anybody to be done wrong. And so he heard about this poor man that had his little lamb taken away from this man, man that had all this stuff. And David was like, who is this person that would do such evil? 
I'm, I'm going to do something to him. We're going to we're going to make sure that we're going to make right by the situation. And it's funny in all this that David wasn't even thinking about. Now, the minute that, that Nathan had came to him and talked about how some rich man had done some poor man wrong, you would have thought David would have got quiet and went in the corner. You would have thought that David would have said, you know what, I need, I need to go somewhere and be quiet right now. Because David had just done something even worse than that. But no David, and he could not see himself. He could not. See, that's what happens to us sometimes is that we're real good at, at putting the blame on other people. We're real good at putting the blame on the devil. But many times when it comes to our own sins and our own evils and the things that we have in our heart, the things that we've done is not right, all of a sudden we get amnesia. And so David wasn't even thinking. He, that was beyond him. He had solved that problem. Let's go down to verse 7. It says, and Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And then it goes on to talk about how God was like, look, and all these things, I've done all these things for you, but you still got it in your heart to go out and do evil. And not only did he do evil, but he tried to pretend like he hadn't done anything wrong. That's what happens to us many times in life. We go through, we do things, and we blame it. What are we blaming on? We blame it on the devil, right? Oh, the devil got me doing wrong. The devil uh, up to no good. The devil, the devil, what people say, the devil made me do it, right? But we talk about other people, and we want to point at other people, and want to blame things on other people. We want to act like it's the devil, or the devil got us under some, under some type of control. But many times, we're not looking at ourselves. And so the message for today is, enemy or the inner me. I'm going to say this to you again. I want you to think about this while I'm telling you this. Is it the enemy or is it the inner me? Is it that person that's on the inside that don't want to do right? Is it that person on the inside that just wants to do wrong or make bad decisions? Or is it really the devil who's got you by some strings? Is it really the devil that has you like a puppet, that has you going out and doing things that are unrighteous and unholy? See, God had to deal with me on this because I was one of those people that wanted to blame the devil for everything. And then I had to come to the place to realize that it was the inner me that was more dangerous than anything the devil could do to me in my life and so we misplace the blame and we don't want to take responsibilities for our own mistakes our own errors our own thought processes you know a lot of times people call me and they want to be free they want deliverance they they want to they they call me oh the devil got me bound oh satan's doing this oh i got Witches are after me. I've, I've, I've heard some of everything. And, and so people are always calling me, telling me what the devil is doing to them. Amen? And, and, and while I believe the enemy goes out and does evil and harms and does things to people or whatever, many times what I find out is I say, okay, I can help you. I, but the first thing I ask them, I say, what's your relationship with Jesus Christ? And when I ask them what their relationship with Jesus Christ is, many times they'll get to stuttering, ah, 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 well, ah. You know, I, I, well, I, you know, I, I, hadn't, I, hadn't, I hadn't been in church in a while. That's the first thing they say. And I say, no, no, I, I want to know how's your relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, I, I, I need to do better in, in that area. And so when I try to minister to them and talk to them about Jesus Christ, many times they're like, okay, okay, okay. I just want to know, can you get me free from the devil? See, they've got in their mind that the source of all their issues the source of all their problems is the enemy. And if I could just say something or pray something or send some oil to them or read some scriptures and get the devil to go on about the way, then their life will work itself out. But what I'd be trying to get to them is to understand that, look, if you would change your mind, if you would pull away from unrighteousness, if, if you would, would make a decision, if you would say within your mind, oh no, I'm, I'm not going to sleep around anymore. If you would say within your heart, I'm gonna, not going to be out there anymore. I'm not going to do those drugs anymore. If you would say within yourself and believe in Jesus, then all that stuff that you think the devil got power over you in, you realize there's no power 
at all. You have to really ask yourself, is it the enemy the cause of all my problems or is the inner me that takes what the devil tries to do and make it real in my life? So we want to blame the devil for everything. We want to blame him, we blame him, we blame him every problem, every misdeed, every issue. But I realize in life we have a lot of trials and every trial that we go through is, is not from the devil. Some trials that we go through are directly from God. They are tests from God. And these tests that we go through, these trials that we go through are for perfecting. They are for strengthening and establishing you as a man or woman of God. But not only does God take us through trials and tests, we also suffer from attacks directly from the devil. And so today, I'm not sitting here trying to teach you or tell you that the enemy doesn't come in like a flood. I'm not sitting here trying to tell you that the devil doesn't try stuff and pull things against you and do all these run tricks and, and play games. I'm not trying to, tell you all that, trying to tell you something outside of that. But what I want you to understand is that there is something else that if you don't get that under the control, then Satan will have his way over you in your life. And it comes down to number three, why we have life's trials is because of the inner me. That person on the inside of you. Sometimes we mean well. I meant to do right. I, 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 I meant, I meant to, to live this way. I, I meant to, to go about my life that way. I, I meant to do good. And, and, and sometimes we meant bad. Sometimes we go through problems in our life because we, we had in our heart to go out and do something that wasn't right. We did it, and troubles come into our life. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to. They wanted me to get the devil up off of them, but it was because of their own sin that they had problems to start with. But we say the devil's after us, or the devil's ruining my life, or, or Satan's coming to get me, or the devil sent his demons to do this to me, but it's sin that's on the inside of us that's causing all the problems. And sometimes we have life trials because we just didn't pray. We just didn't ask God. He says, your will for my life. We were the problems. We go out trying to do and do this and embrace that and grab onto this and grab onto that. And then we have troubles and we say, oh, the devil got busy. And people do this in the church all the time. Is they don't pray and ask God and then they go out and do stuff and stuff don't be right. And then they come back and say, God, why don't you let the devil do this? And God will say, well, did you even pray about it to start with? Did you even ask me? What's this my will for you? See, the reason why I can preach this is because I fall into this. I had a situation where I did something that I really felt like I should do, and I felt like it was righteous and holy, and it didn't work out, and I was frustrated, and I came to God. And I said, Lord, I thought this was what you wanted me to do. And the Lord said to me, I didn't tell you to do that. See, it was the inner me. It was the inner me that desired to do it. It was the inner me he didn't want to pray about it. It was the inner me that wanted to go ahead and put my hands in it. It was the inner me that made the decision to go out and make it happen. I, sometimes we do something, I call it self-fulfilling prophecies. But we'll go out and do something and we'll make it happen and we'll say, look what God did. God hadn't said it. God hadn't spoken it but we'll make it happen. We'll self-fulfill it. And then when it falls apart, we'll say, oh, the devil got up in there. Amen? But it was really the inner you that made the decision. See, if you can get beyond yourself, the devil can't have no power over you. If you can get beyond the inner you, those, those secrets that are on the inside of you, those secrets that are in the heart. I know I'm not preaching a message today that's about the blessings. I know that that's a better message, talking about faith and moving mountains. I, I'm going to preach that next week, amen? So if you come back next week, I'm going to stir you up with some faith. But today we need to deal with that mess that's on the inside. The inner you that's keeping you from walking into your purpose. 
the inner you that's, that's causing you to struggle with your righteousness, the, 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 that, that voice on the inside that's saying, look, you should go out and do this. That voice is trying to convince you that you ought not have to walk and be holy. That voice is trying to tell you that you can go out and be like you used to be or go back to how you used to do. But God doesn't want us to allow the inner you to run you. Amen. Amen. I remember growing up, I remember um, I used to look folks in my family, I used to hear them walking around and they walk and they'd be walking and they'd stub their toe and they'd be like, the devil. Now, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. His old folks used to say it. They go out and maybe they drop something. They drop a plate on the floor. The devil. Oh, the devil busy today. Well, maybe you was weren't paying attention and you dropped the plate. But we train ourselves. And I'm, I'm speaking directly to those folks who claim to be in the church. That we want to blame everything on the devil, but sometimes it's our bad habits, it's our ways, our bad ways, the things that we have learned to do and the ways we have learned to go about doing things is the reason why we're in a situation we're in. And the devil just sitting back picking at you, he's poking at you, and you're thinking it's the devil, and the devil's laughing, but like they don't even realize it's what they're doing. Sometimes people stay single all their life. It's because of them. Ain't no good men out here. No, ain't no good you out here. <laughs> I'm not just picking on women. Same thing for me. Hadn't found the right one. Well, maybe you're not the right one. We need to examine ourselves first. Because it's yourself that's going to get you blessed. Amen. When I say that, it's you choosing Christ that's going to bring the blessings into your life. But if you don't choose Christ, if you don't choose the things of God, then you're going to get what the world or what the devil has to offer. Now turn your Bibles over to Philippians 2 and 12. Philippians 2 and 12. And it says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now now, much more in my presence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Just work out your own salvation. That means the inner you has to make a decision. You want to go to heaven, it's dependent on you. The devil can't stop you from being saved. I'm going to say this to you again. The devil can't stop you from being saved. If you're not saved, it's because of what's on the inside of you. It's because of the inner me if you're not going to heaven. Amen? Folks think the devil is going to take you to hell. The devil is going to take you to hell. You're going to buy your own ticket. If you end up in hell one day, know that you punched your own ticket to go to hell. Because it's the inner you that God's going to determine whether or not you go to heaven or hell. So the devil, he's already on his way. His road is already set. All he needs to do is convince a whole bunch of other folks to let their inner me get in control of them and take them to hell also. See, it's us, it's you that choose to sin or not. It's you. It's you that choose to sin or not. And it says in James 1 and 14, it says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. It didn't say that you get death because the devil was messing around with you in your life. It doesn't say that, does it? It says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away. Does it say of the devil's lust? It says of your own lust, the inner me. It says, and enticed. And it says, when lust has conceived, meaning that when the things that you are wrestling with on the inside of you, you begin to embrace them. It says, when you embrace them, it brings forth sin, meaning you go out and do what the inner me is telling you to do. 
and says that when it's finished, it brings forth death. We know the Bible says the wages of sin are death, right? So when the inner me embraces sin and goes out and do it, it brings you into death. It says, but what the gift of God is what? Eternal life. And so we stand in this place. Whether we're going to choose life or death, right? Turn over to Jeremiah 17 and 9. Hope this is getting to some of you. When I first started walking to Christ, I want to blame everything on the devil. But I realized that some folks just ain't right within their own, their own selves. And some things in me just weren't right within my own self. And if I couldn't get past me, I definitely couldn't beat the devil. And it says in Jeremiah 17 9, it says the heart is deceitful above all things. It says and desperately wicked. Who can know it? It says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to ways, his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Does it say the fruit of what the devil made him do? Does it say the fruit of what the enemy convinced them to do? No, it says the fruit of his doings. And it talks about the heart, which is an inward thing. And so... Your heart is the one that gets you to do evil. Your heart is the one that gets you into an evil place. It's not the devil that gets you. The devil can tempt you into an evil place, but it's your heart that accepts the inner me that accepts and does. I don't know y'all walking around here like, the devil got my hand. I can't stop it. Go hurt somebody. Here, somebody said, the devil made me do it. Why you do it? The devil made me do it. Nah, you did it. You just took what the devil said and went out and did it. Because the inner you had to be in agreement. And this is what the devil does. He tries to get the inner you to be in agreement with him. I got down here. Our enemy is an instigator. Our enemy is a frustrator. Our enemy is a hater. Our enemy is a liar. But we choose, we think, we speak. I'm going to say this to you again. Our enemy is an instigator. I mean, he try to start stuff all the time. He's speaking to you. The enemy is always speaking to your inner man trying to get you to embrace unrighteous things, trying to get you to embrace unrighteous thoughts, trying to get you to do this and do that. And so our enemy instigates, our enemy frustrates. Yeah, the Satan, Satan can come into your life and he can stir up stuff and he can cause problems and all this type of stuff or whatever, but Satan doing things to you is not your sin. I'm going to say this to you again. Satan doing things to you is not your sin. Your sin is when you take what the devil has said to you and you go out and do. That's your sin. So he's a frustrator. He's a hater. He hates that you can choose Christ. He, he hates that you can go to heaven for an eternity. He hates that you can be blessed. He hates that you can be full of the Holy Ghost. He hates these things. And so with him being a hater, what does he try to do? He trying to go out and mess up what you got also, right? And I got down here, he's a liar. Our enemy will lie to us. Tell us all types of stuff that's untrue. You'll never live for God. You'll never find purpose. You'll, you'll never be holy. You can't get free. And this is one of the biggest lies that Satan tells. He says you will never get free of sin. You'll never be able to stop that thing. Or, or, or he gets you to, to say, this is just how I am. Remember when people say that? This is just how I am. He gets you to convince you that this is what your personality is. That's one thing I found when I first came to Christ, that the personality I had was not who I was. The personality I had was the one that the world and Satan had given me. 
they had told me who I was and I embraced it. You see? And so Satan lies to you about who you are and causes the inner you to embrace. But it's us that chooses whether or not we take the identity that the enemy gives to us or the identity that God has for us. Amen? Let's go over to Proverbs 18 and 20. Proverbs 18 and 20. And it says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. He says, and with the increase of his lips, he shall, be, shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. He said what? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The inner you, when it speaks, there's death and life that come from that. It doesn't say that the devil gets a hold of your mouth or the enemy gets a hold of your mouth. But it says death and life on the power of your tongue. You see? And so we can choose to speak life over ourselves. We can choose to speak death over ourselves. It's Satan that wants us to speak death. See, Satan can't send us to hell, but we sure enough can with the conversation of our mouth, right? Whether we say, I believe in God, I trust God, I believe in Jesus, or whether I say I don't. And so with us in our own strength to speak life and death over us, it's our enemy's job to get the inner me to speak it. Amen? Turn your Bibles over to Luke 22 and 3. Luke 22 and 3. And so the, the Bible says that Jesus went out and he gathered up his disciples and he walked about and all that he chose, he was walking by and he said, hey, come with me. And he found another disciple and he said, hey, come with me. And the Bible says that he, he gathered up his disciples and, and he gathered up 12 disciples and, and you know, and let's, look, let's look down at Luke 22 and 3. And this is talking about Jesus. So Jesus actually handpicked these disciples. And when he actually picked them, they were all righteous men. I'm going to say this to you again. When Jesus picked all his disciples, they were all righteous, including Judas. And look at this. Luke 22 and 3. It says, then entered Satan into Judas, surname Iscariot, being the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains, how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and coveted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. And so Satan got inside Judas, and he convinced the inner me of Judas, the inside, the, the, the person of Judas, to make a decision to the betray Jesus Christ. Man, get you some money. It's Jesus' name, man. Get you some money. I'm sure Satan was saying all types of stuff, but it was Judas who had to make the decision to, to do it. It was his decision. It wasn't Satan that did it. It was Judas that did it. We can say Satan got Jesus taken to the cross. But it was Satan that influenced Judas to betray Jesus. Amen? And so it was Judas that did the sin. Now let's go over to Matthew 27 and 3. And it says, Then Judas, when he had betrayed him, when he had saw that he was condemned, says he repented himself. So that shows you right there that he just wasn't just a demon. It says he repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the 30 pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it's not lawful for them to put it into the treasury because it is the price of blood. 
And so Judas, I'm sure he, he probably, he probably made up all types of excuses on why it was okay. You know, my family, we ain't got a lot of money. You know, Jesus, we, you know, he all right guy, but, you know, we need this money. 30 pieces of silver, I don't know. And I don't know, I haven't done any research and, you know, all this type of stuff. I don't know how much 30 pieces of silver is, but, you know, these days, I assume 30 pieces of silver has a lot of value to it. You know, I'm sure back then, 30 pieces of silver was a lot of money. And so, you know, Judas, he may not have been able to buy a car, but maybe he was going to buy him a brand new chariot. <laughs> with the fastest horses. <laughs> with gold trim. They did have the gold back then, amen? Maybe he was going to buy him a villa in the upper room. You see? Maybe he was going to have him serve. You don't know what was going on through Judas's mind, but, but what happened, that the inner him got in place of his love for Jesus. And that's what Satan wants to do is he wants to enter you to, to get involved and to begin to make decisions and forget about what God said. And forget about who God is to you. And forget about the love you're supposed to have for the things of God. The inner you begins to rationalize. We really need this. It's really going to make our life better. But all it did was lead to destruction. Anytime the you instead of God is making decisions, it's going to lead you to destruction. Anytime you're making your own decisions and not including God, it's going to lead you to a bad place. We have to make sure that the enemy is not running our lives. There's people that go around all the time think this, this is how I feel. This is what I want. This is what I desire. This is what I need. This is what I feel. This is, is okay for me. And, and we begin to even blame God. Well, God made me this way. You hear people say that? Well, God, made, why would God make me this way? No, you're choosing to be that way. But that's what we do. We don't want to accept responsibility for our own choices, or our own evil heart. Amen? And so, we should continue to press forward and listen to the voice of God. Not get entangled with our own selves or what ourselves want. But let God direct us. Amen? In 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, it says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? God wants your inner you to be holy. How does your inner you get to be holy? Your inner you gets to be holy by being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? And the Holy Ghost will make you holy. You see what I'm saying? But if it's just you, and there's not, no, not any spirit, then it's you that's making the decisions. It's you that's doing things. It's you that's doing that. It's you that's, that's doing everything. And you is going to lead you into a bad place. And then you'll be saying, the devil got me bound. The devil got me entangled. I'm sure God gets tired of people making bad decisions and then calling him saying, Lord, deliver me. But I tell you, he'll appreciate if you come to him and come embracing that it was your, your mistake. Don't come to God blaming the devil. Don't come, look, the devil got me tangled in this stuff. Now nah, you got you tangled in this stuff. The devil just convinced you. But it was you that made the decision. See, you can choose life or death. You can choose righteousness or unrighteousness. You can choose salvation. God gave us the ability to choose. We can choose whether or not we want to believe in Jesus Christ. We can choose to stand in wholeness and not walk in sin. We can choose to walk away from evil things. We can choose to walk away from stuff that's no good. We can choose to not listen to that voice inside of us that's in the flesh that wants to do all this stuff that's not godly. We can choose to ignore it. People out there that pray, Lord, take this lust away from me. And God is saying, I gave you the power to walk away from it. 
See, that's, that's one of the places that we make a mistake. Lord, take this sin away from me. Yank it out of me, Lord. You have to make a decision. That's why he gives you his Holy Spirit, that you have the strength to walk away. That you have the strength to say, no more will I walk in this sin. No more will I dwell with devils. No more will I embrace things that God is not pleased with. No matter what the devil says. No matter who the devil brings to you in your life. No matter the temptation or the things that he brings. It is your choice. And when the Bible talks about Satan coming in like a flood, that's him overwhelming you with pressure to walk in sin. The devil can't walk up to you and say, you're full of sin. He can't walk up to you and say, you're unholy. It's you that chooses to be unholy. And so, if the choice is not with Satan, but with you, who's the most dangerous? The inner me, the inner you is the most dangerous and that's the thing that we have to get over ourselves and say we're going to listen to God. Amen? Got some keys to overcoming the inner me and walking in victory. Some keys to overcoming the inner me and walking in victory. Number one, admit your errors and heart issues. If you can start with yourself, if you can admit to yourself that you have some, made some errors and you got some stuff in your heart that's not quite right, that's the first place. If you can't see yourself, then it's going to be hard for you to admit it to someone else, right? The Bible says let a man examine himself. You should be doing some self-examination every day. You should be looking at yesterday. Okay, did I do right yesterday? Am I doing right now? Am I, am I, did I go about this the right way? You see? And, and, if, and, if you, and if you didn't, you should change it. But you should admit your errors and your heart issues. Number two, repent of them. Admit them and repent. You see? When you repent, you've held your flesh, yourself accountable. I'm sorry. Repent, repent to God. Tell God you're sorry. You know, since I know maybe some things you hold back from your friends and family and this and that or whatever, but when you get before God, you might as well tell the truth. You ain't right. You might as well get on your knees. Lord, I sure ain't right for that. I was wrong. You know, since I try to hold it back and pretend like you was right, just, just Lord, I was wrong. Just go ahead and repent. That's how you get beyond the inner me. You humble yourself and say, look, I need to do better. Number three, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So after you repent and the Holy Spirit begins to take more strength over you, listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Try to understand what is God telling me to do? How is God telling me to be? Your nature, even, even beyond just listening for his voice, your nature should become holy. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, your nature should be to do holy things. Your nature should be to walk in righteousness. Just like people act a fool without, some people don't go nowhere and be like, no, I'm going to act a fool when I get up here. Some people do that now. But some people, they walk up in a place, they act a fool, but they don't think about it before they get there. Because foolishness is in them. Why do they do that? Well, they're just a fool. They have become what the enemy has created for them. So just like you can be a fool without thinking about it, you also can be holy without thinking about it. Amen? Some people think, well, i got to ask God why I should do that or not. Well, is it right? Is it holy? You ain't got to ask God whether or not you should be kind to somebody. Lord, I need to be kind to them now. No, you should know better than that. But that's what people do. Should I forgive them, Lord? You don't need to ask God that. 
That should be a part of your nature should be to forgive. Your nature should be to love on someone. Your nature should be to be your nature should be to be holy, to be righteous, to be true, to love the truth, to love the things of God. Your nature should be that you love the Lord's church. Amen. It says in John 10 and 27, it says, my sheep hear my voice. It says, and I know them. And they follow me. He says, my sheep hear me. They, I know them. And they follow me. When you listen for the Holy Spirit, it will speak to you. It will speak to your inner man. And tell your inner man, when you submit to it, it will speak to the inner you and tell your inner you to do righteousness and holiness. You see? But when you're not filled with the Holy Spirit and you're full with sin and you're full of devils and the devils speak to the inner you and tell you to do unrighteous things. They tell you to do things that's not from God. And you go out and do it and you don't think whether or not it's good or not. It just has become you because that's what's on the inside of you. And the inner you has given to whatever is on the inside. So if devil's on the inside of you, then your inner you is giving over to devils. But the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, then, the, then your inner you is given over to the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Last one, and this is a big one. This is a big one. I've been in counseling before people, and I get in there, and they sit down. They don't be sitting down five minutes. I'm, I did wrong. I'm wrong. I've done, I, yep, that was me. Yep, mm-hmm. They, they, they admit to everything. You'd be like, hey, did you, did you cause it the flood? You say, yeah, that was me too. I, I caused it the flood. They, they, whatever you say, they're going to admit to it. They'll embrace it. They'll repent for it. I'm sorry. No matter what's said, they'll admit to it. They'll repent for it. But a lot of times, they're not true. But the reason why many times people do that is because they just want to get beyond it. They'll admit to it, but they don't really want to do right. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes people will be in sin. They'll admit to sin. I'm talking about if you want to overcome the inner me, okay? You have to do all these steps. They'll admit to it. They'll repent of it. But what they don't do is they won't be a doer of what the Holy Spirit is saying do. This is if you want to overcome the inner me. The reason why people apologize and go back to do it again apologize, I'm sorry, I should have done that, but then do it again, it's because, it's because they aren't a doer of what the Holy Spirit is telling them to do. So if you want to overcome the enemy, you don't only have to admit it, repent of it, but you need to be listening to the Holy Spirit and doing what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. If you're not a doer, you can forget about overcoming the enemy. You're going to do something. So if you're not doing what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, who are you doing with? He's going to do what you think or what the devil thinks, right? And so if you want to overcome you, you have to listen and do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. You should be seeking God day in and day out, saying, Lord, what is your will? And mean it. What is your will and mean it? Not a false will is your will, Lord. Sometimes say, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Then we'll go back doing what we want to do. What do you want me to do, Lord? Lord, I'll do anything. Lord, I promise you get me out of the situation. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to be holy. I'm going to do all this stuff. And as soon as you get out of the situation, you go back doing what you want to do. We do that all the time. But truly, earnestly, Lord, what do you want? me to do. See, because you're being influenced at all times. You go to your job, you're being influenced. You get in your car, you're being influenced. Some of y'all are influenced to go off on folks driving down the road. You don't even realize it, but you're being influenced. We're being influenced day in and day out by devils, by people, by our own selves. And if you're full of the Holy Ghost, you're being influenced by the Holy Spirit. But you have to make a decision on what you're going to do. 
Who are you going to listen to? Who are you going to follow? You see? Amen? Everybody please stand. Is it the enemy, enemy, or the inner me? God wants you to overcome yourself that you may walk with God. He wants you to overcome yourself and you embrace the Holy Spirit. The devil has no power over you because you're fully submitted to God's spirit. All eyes closed, all eyes closed. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Heads bowed, eyes closed. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now, does anybody here, all eyes closed, heads bowed. Now, does anybody here that has heard the word and you realize that the inner you is something that you really need to work on and you want to be free from yourself, revelation and understanding of the things you struggle with. I want you to raise your hand right now. In Jesus' name. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. We bless the Lord. Then put your hands down. In the name of Jesus. Now, does anybody here, last thing, last thing, does anybody here that has heard the word, has loved the church, and loved the teachers of the church, and you feel like this is the home that God has placed you in? I want to invite you right now to raise your hand for any one of those three things I want to invite you to come forward and we'll pray for you we'll pray for you that God will help you get out of the inner you and walk in the things of him I'm going to pray for you that whatever device the enemy has brought against you in your life and you want freedom whether it's you the devil or whoever it is but you just want to be free I want to invite you to come forward and we're going to pray for you in Jesus name we're going to believe the power of God is going to work its way in your life. And that every shackle, every bind of the enemy, every trick, every mind game, everything that has been designed to draw and destroy you in your life, we're going to pray that God deliver you out of it. And we're going to pray that the Spirit of God renews and refreshes your mind and your heart in the name of Jesus. That your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His will be done.
Amen, amen. We bless the Lord. Could you all stand to your feet as, as we close out? One more thing before we close out. Um, if you any of you have small children, we have gifts for them today. Um, and we'll have them laid out um, at the table um, at the end of service. So if any of you have small children, uh, we definitely have a gift from for them today from Righteousness Ministries. So we would ask all parents if you would bring your children um, in order to receive their gift. Amen. Amen. Let us pray.